Hi, it's Pamela. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to make a family tree in Doodly. Hey, and welcome to the official Doodly YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content, please click the like and subscribe button below. Now let's get straight to the video. Whether you need to create a family tree for a school assignment or you want to do it for your children as a legacy, Doodly whiteboard videos are a fun way to do it. So that's what we're going to do today. And as you can see, I've already started. And what I have is a graphic of a tree that I found on one of the free sites. It was probably Pixabay or FreePick. And it's just an illustration of a tree. And it does have this little line here. So I may or may not want that. If I don't want it, I'm just gonna resize the tree a little and reposition it. And I did take away the background color and made it transparent. Um, it was a cream color, it would have been fine, but I just wanted the whiteboard effect, so I did take the color away. And I have a couple shapes here. I have a rectangle, and I just added some text to it. And what we will do is change this text and say the Martin family. This is fictional. Put it over here. And we're starting with this person, Sandy Martin. We'll just pretend that that's me. And I have, as you can see, it's just a circle shape, some text, and a little doodly graphic. So if you go to props and search for circle, this is the one that I chose. This is an enterprise asset, so you may or may not have it depending on which version of doodly you have. And then I just sized it however I thought would look nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to put Sandy's parents. And rather than using this and resizing it over and over, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it. So. Control or Command C to copy, and Control or Command V to paste. And I'm going to do the same thing with the text because it's sized the way I like it. I'm just going to drag it over. Now you notice that one went behind, so we just need to bring it down here so it's in front of the circle. And we'll arrange these in a moment. So let's say her dad is Jim and her mom is Cynthia. And then what I started with was the little doodly character and if you want to do that and you want to find some characters that represent these people you could do that. I'll show you how. So I have this man here to be too large, so we need to shrink him down to size. We're gonna say this is the dad, Jim Martin. Now you'll notice we are limited to how small we can make him, so he's either gonna hang out like this, which doesn't look bad. You know, we could put his birth years and death date if he has one on here, and that would be okay. But what I wanna do today is use actual photos instead of doodly characters. So let's go over to props. I have already added them. I made them circular in shape so that they'll fit in nicely to our little circles. So let's go ahead and delete Sandy and Jim. And let's put in actual photos. So let's say this is Sandy. I just want to add her. She's going to be too big, so we're just going to shrink her down and move her into place. Let's take her name and bring it to the foreground by dragging it. And let's put it down here, like so. So there's Sandy. I may change the color of her name so it stands out a little more. We'll see. And then let's make her dad be this guy. And let's bring his name to the foreground. And we'll bring it down. Okay, and now we need her mother, which will make this nice lady here. So now we have her parents. Now we need her grandparents. So it's the same process. 
So let's go ahead and copy and paste one of the circles. We'll do it again. So those are gonna be her parents. And then we're gonna do it again for his parents. So here's a grandpa. Now I have a little branch that I'm gonna add. And we may or may not use it, but I thought this might be kind of fun to connect them. So if I wanted to add, you know, maybe I put her kids here and we could add, you know, kind of going out, these would be her kids. Or if we needed to extend the tree branches out for the grandparents. And that's something that we could do. I'm not gonna do that because I'm keeping my tree just kind of simple with the, her parents and grandparents, but it is an option. Now, right now, it's a jumbled mess. If we were to do a preview, you would see that it's just gonna be kind of random here. And it's gonna be time consuming. With him drawing the shapes for three seconds each, right? So what we wanna do is just kind of get a sense of, okay, what's going on? And what are we gonna do about it? So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to video settings, and I do this all the time. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna turn off smart mode, so that way he's not erasing before he draws. And I don't necessarily want this particular hand style. Let's choose a different hand style for fun. Let me try this one. And then with my images, I don't want them scribbling on either. So for each one of them, I'm gonna click the little pencil icon. And instead of having it scribble on, I'm gonna turn it to fade on. I'm gonna do that for all of them. I'll fast forward so you don't have to see me do this. Now for every one of these little circles, I wanna change it from a three second draw on to one second, okay? And same with this rectangle up top here. So I'm changing the duration to one second on all of them. That's gonna save me a lot of time. And then the tree itself. Do I want it already on the scene when we start or do I want it to draw or fade on? It would be kind of cool to draw it on if we have the luxury of time. So to do that, you click the little pencil icon. And instead of having it scribble like this, we are going to do drawing paths. So you start with the first one and I'm gonna start with the line, which is not showing in this particular case because I remember I dropped it down but we might want to change that so we would probably want it to look nice. I'm just using a fairly thin path size and I don't want the tree trunk being revealed that's why I have this nice skinny exact size there. I'm going to do a new path and I'm going to make this one fatter okay so I'm going to start here and you see it's kind of thin. I'm gonna choose the path size and make it a little bit larger because I wanna get through this quickly, okay? So I'm gonna move it over here. I don't really wanna spend a whole lot of time being intricate on this. I just wanna get the illusion that I'm drawing this, this tree. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, what you may wanna do is talk about the different family members, and if so, you would do a voiceover, and you would need to add some pauses before the next one comes in. I'm not gonna do that necessarily today, but if you wanna do that, the way you would do it is you have Sandy Martin. Let's say you can talk about her for 10 seconds. Well, you don't want Jim to start drawing on while you're talking about her. So what you would do is you would go over here to his first circle. You don't want that coming on while you're talking for 10 seconds about Sandy. So you're gonna put a delay here for 10 seconds.
and then you could talk about him for however long and put a delay before the circle for Cynthia comes on or whoever, okay? So let's just take a quick preview and you'll see how that works and then we'll be done. So here comes our tree, then our little nameplate, and then here's Sandy Martin. And then we can talk about her for 10 seconds, remember, before her father comes on. So blah, 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 da, 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 da. She was born in Idaho and this and that. And her father was Jim Martin. And her mother was Cynthia Martin. And so on and so forth. And that's the basics of creating a family tree in Doodly. Thanks for watching.